Hello everybody, this is Javier Almasi. Today I am told you need to make a satellite network. Alright, I'm not told why you need to make a satellite network, I'm just told that you need to make a satellite network. So we're going to go ahead and make one. I have satellite network because I have remote tech, alright, and I need it for make uh, probes go to space and talk at them. Maybe you have similar concern. Hopefully that you do because we're going to go over procedure for remote tech, as well as just regular getting satellites up there. So we start with basic rockets, we want to do a three-man for some reason. Um, it is really does not matter the launch vehicle you use, but this is what we are using. And we got ACES because I do not want to manually pilot, and I've got utility uh, satellite, or, um, sorry, parachutes so that my Kerbals don't die when they come back home. Because I don't like to kill my Kerbals. You might, not, not, you might not know this from watching my other videos, but I really do not like to um, kill my Kerbals. One more thing we need to add if you are doing remote attack. We need this pod here, we need this uh, remote command pod. Alright, it will ensure that we can talk to our satellites even when we are out of line of sight with KSC from this craft, and that is very important, alright? Also, maybe that is the reason why I use 3-man pod, because you need 3-man pod to activate remote command center. So this will be not just a rocket in space, it will be rocket space base, although we're bringing it back down, so it is temporary. We just want that so that we can manually control uh, sorry, remotely control crop in space. But I'm talking so much that you're probably not absorbing anything anymore, you just want to see me make the space network already. So, we're going to take this cubic octagonal strut, and that allows us to attach random things to the side of this uh, fuel tank. Alright, so just put one for now. I know what you're thinking, we're going to need more than one, Javi, and I do not want to do this a hundred times. But you'll have to trust me, and if you cannot trust me, you need to leave the room right now, okay? I don't care if this is your house, you leave the room right now, and you time out until you calm down and you come back. And the video will be over, it will take about half hour. Alright. So, I'm going to attach this, uh, what you might teach you, this uh, decoupler to your strut. And we need to be very careful in placing this decoupler, okay? You'll notice on this decoupler we have up here, that the arrow... We can't even see the arrow. The arrow is pointing towards um, my uh, command foot here. And the reason it is doing that is because it always points towards what it detached from. So when we hit button, spacebar button to detach this, it will be stuck to the bottom of the rocket, not my command pod. And that is the same of what we want here. We want it pointing away from the fuel tank so that when we de detach it, it sticks to fuel tank and you don't have ugly decoupler on your satellite. All right. So building satellite from bottom up, we want little engine, like LV-909, it is very not powerful, but we are going to build light satellite, so it does not matter. We use small, 90 degrees uh, fuel tank, and then we throw our pod top on top. Now I'm using a remote tank as we've discussed, and if you do not have compatibility, you use one of these blue thingamajigs. But I have compatibility with uh, stock parts, so I will use Steputnik, because I like the way it looks. Okay. Alright, also, you know what, before we put that on, let's put a battery on so we have something to control it with, some power source, which will get us uh, through initial nighttime stage. Now we need important parts for remote tech, and from here on out, well, you know, let's do the, the parts you don't need for not remote tech. We want to put a couple of these cheap uh, solar panels on, you only need one, but I put two because we want symmetry, alright? It is important that this satellite is not just, you know, pretty candy for launch craft, it needs to be able to fly on its own, and if it is not weighted properly, once it is on its own, it will not fly straight, and that will hinder your progress. So, for remote tech, we need two very important parts, we need dipole antenna, so that you can talk to KSC on the ground, once it is alone in orbit. I can go anywhere, and then we want satellite dish, I like this Duna dish, uh, they're smaller ones, but uh, Duna will get you anywhere you need to go, and then after that you just build more satellite relay. Now, if you just want one, and that is that is fine, you need to put it right on the very top. Okay, as close as you can get it. Um, again, for weight consideration, because if you have it on side, which looks better, which I like to do, once this satellite is detached, it will not fly straight, because this will make weight all kinds of screwy. So, um, I think I'm going to like two, because I like the uh, the angled side look. To flip it around so that they look normal. Um, you want to get as close as possible to even on both sides, but close is good enough, alright? So don't, you don't want to be perfectionist. You don't have to put all the pieces into the slot and make the right connections, alright? 
So now we have functional satellite. It's got uh, propulsion, it's got fuel, it's got powers, it's got uh, radio equipment. So we're going to detach it from the strut and we're going to use symmetry to make six. Now I know what you are thinking, you are thinking, Coven, I only need four, right, to make satellite network. Well, this is true, if you can line them up perfectly and you can keep them there, then that is all you need. But I'm not good at that, I'm not with the math, I'm not uh, with the science. I just want a quick and dirty satellite network to get me flying around as fast as I can. So, there it is, and this is our orbital craft right here. Okay, that is what is going to be in the space, uh, deploying satellites. Alright, so now we just need to do the launch vehicle. And launch vehicle is uh, mostly not important how you want to do it. I'm going to build uh, Rocco Max Asparagus. Uh, I don't normally like to use asparagus in my tutorials because I don't really want to teach you asparagus. Okay, this is a task better suited to people like Scott Manley or the guy with the weird accent um, that know a little bit more about rocket surgery. But I am... I'm just Hovin Omasi, okay? I work in a desk job, okay? So... We are going to build asparagus, but we are not necessarily going to explain it very well. And that is... That is something that uh, I apologize for. But like I said, launcher is mostly... Irrelevant, okay? If you've got other launcher you like, that you've designed, that you've downloaded, that uh, will get this into space quickly, efficiently, and most parts so you have a little bit of fuel to move around, then that is by all means welcome. Do a little bit of tying. worried about when parts do that. Maybe it makes no difference, maybe it doesn't. But, uh, but, uh... Alright, so a pretty good rocket here. I think we will remember everything. We've got parachutes so Kerbal don't die, we've got satellites so Kerbal can talk with each other, we got command center, we got lots of fuel and stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and stage this asparagus, because we didn't do that yet be very messy if we did not stage asparagus. Okay, speaking of staging, we want to make sure that we take these engines that are on satellite and we move them all the way up to last stage, because we do not want to accidentally trigger them when we are still in flight. And the same goes for uh, the decouplers that they're attaching them there. Want to put them in last stage because we will decouple everything manually once we get to the space. So, and they will disappear off of here, I think, once we get them off the craft. If they don't, it doesn't matter, they won't control anything. Alright. So, staging is good, craft is good. We are going to name it Seto Launcher because that is a clever name. Alright, so we're going to put some, you know, now that we think of it, let's make some of these so that it does not blow itself up on launch pad and make Haven look very embarrassment. Make sure that they are staged at the very bottom, which they are not. Alright, save. Alright, so rocket has not blown up, this is very good. You see we have this flight computer here. And that is because of the uh, remote tech parts. If you do not have this, it does not change much, but we will use it instead of the simple uh, kill rot is your normal SAS. But we will use surface so that it will help us do gravity turns and things. And uh, let's go ahead without further ado, throttle up to about halfway. Shoot off. Okay, this next part is nothing fancy, it is just, uh, you know, it's launching into space, you probably already know how to do this if you're building satellite network, doing advanced thing. So if you want to go right now and make some rice or something, make some minute rice and come back in exactly one minute, then we will resume where we left off. I will I will not do anything while you are gone, you go on, you get out of here, it will not be important, okay? So you will, in just 30 seconds now, you'll be back in minute 30 seconds, we'll greet you then. You know, I find I find the key to making rice, okay? And this is this is not rice making tutorial, all right? This is rocket flying satellite network tutorial. So don't take this as fact. You know, I'm not qualified rice tutorialist. 
but you want to cook it so that it is tender but you do not want to cook it too much you know what i mean this is same uh, with macaroni and cheese when you make because people cook it and they cook it you know longer and longer and it gets bigger right it gets bigger and bigger and you think oh great i have more mac and cheese but it tastes like garbage okay so don't do that cook it just enough all right you want to cook as little as possible this is gold with rice this is gold with pasta um just do that okay Right, we're getting very close to time now when people who are cooking rice will get back. So we need to calm down and play it cool like we did not talk about anything. Because I said I was not going to talk about anything. And, uh, well, hey, you're back. All right. So you made your rice. You got that you're eating it, right? It's very good. Okay, well, you did not miss anything when you were gone. You do not need to rewind. All right. Nothing happened. Uh, I did not give rice cooking and macaroni and cheese cooking tips. All right. I don't know what anybody told you. That is not what happened. What we did was we launched to space, which is boring, which is why you left. Maybe if you were going to give me this, uh, this grilling, this inquisition, maybe you should not have come back. Maybe you should just leave room now and come back when video is over. Alright, so we're going to do gravity 10. We're talking about doing it with this. So we're going to hit um, 45 degrees on pitch and update. And all of this is turning me to right to 90 degrees uh, to 45 degree pitch. You can do this easily on your own, it is not a big deal. You just um, take off your computer and... Okay, I'm not going to lie to you, I don't even really understand why that happened. Um, let's restart the flight. Maybe we don't use flight computer. Alright, this time I'm just going to go ahead and edit the video so that we are, you know, about where we were before, because... I'm not going to make you cook the rice like a hundred times, alright? Alright everybody, we are back. Um, as you see, we're about at the place we were before. We're going to go ahead and make a gravity turn. We'll do it manually, we'll do it a little bit slow. Maybe the problem was the computer was turning just a bit too fast. So This is very large rocket, not incredibly stable. So, because of all the, uh, the long parts, it's been a lot of wobble. So let's go ahead and ease it on over. And it's not changing its trajectory very well. That might have something to do with it. So we want to let uh, Prograde Marker catch up to us. Okay, and we are now... Oh, we're getting some weird spin. But as long as we spin around it is okay. Alright. Machine mostly successful at this point, so we overheat, we wait for this detachment. Uh, let's check our Apple Apps now. We're aiming for uh, Apple Apps now about 70,000 meters. We do not need it to be super high on this side of the orbit. We want it just bare minimum, that's what we would need to get to uh, time warp, alright? Now that we are close to 54,000, we're going to try and translate most of our speed forward if we can. With more uh, orbital maneuver. If we use flight computer, it's a lot easier, but I guess it is turning too fast. And we did not make very uh, good a rocket, it is very long, which means now it is, uh, what do you call it, it is not very stable. So, you know what? We'll do turns manually, we will not regret this, we will not say, okay, remote tech, you are a machine, you'll do what I say, no matter if it is going to kill us. So, no big deal. I usually fly manual anyway. Maybe I probably should have locked this gimbal, I'll bet you that would have done a lot of good, but that, that is neither here nor there. Things happen, there are flukes in the, in the rocket's design. It is nobody's fault except for, you know, everybody's, because that's just how the universe works, okay, it is physical. Like, um, is it Debbie Gibson? I don't, I don't know. Music is not my uh, strong point, alright. I lift weights, not the music. Okay, I don't do that. Alright, I'm not in bad shape. You look at me, you would say Havin. I could probably take you in a fight, but you are not, um, you're not ridiculous out of shape like some people that I talk to on a day to day basis, because there are a lot of people like that out there. Alright, so we're just about right at 70,000 meter. We are translating almost all of our speed forward. You see, our speed is getting better, but our epilepsis was not really. So, go ahead and get rid of this engine. Start up the next one, and we should get much better engine efficiency. Because we are much lighter now. We're not dragging around the extra fuel tank and engine we do not need anymore. 
So we don't want to get this, let this side of Apple Apps get too high. We got text message, hold on. Alright, text message has been handled dutifully. What are we doing here? Alright, oh, that's right, we're building satellite network. And we are almost on our way to make satellite network, so let's go ahead and we'll to kill the engine for a moment, just to get closer to Apple Apps, so we don't raise this end too much. Let's use this to point at Frog right now. Maybe it is safe that we are out of atmosphere to use the uh, tight computer. We are growing our orbit and we are going to grow it very far on back end. We are going to grow to 2 million. 868,750 meters, give or take. This is um, the uh, orbital height, what you call, that um, is geosynchronous, and that's what we want for satellite. So we're going to go ahead and use this uh, launch craft to get half of the orbit already done, and then we use the engine on the satellite to do the other half. So keeping in mind, the further you go, the faster you go. Two million four, two million five, two million six, two million seven, two million eight, and we want to aim a little bit low. And the reason for that is we want to give some room for the satellite to raise the apple apps to see if it needs to to get where it's going. So it will give a little more than that. Oh, and that was too much. So it doesn't need to be too much lower, it just wants to be a little bit lower so we don't have to worry about pushing too much. But we don't want to miss our window and not push it, right? Because then we cannot go back, we would go all the way to the other end of orbit. And give it a little push, a little more, 266, that will be just fine. Alright, so get rid of this window over there. Now what we are doing, we are just going to wait basically. We have 70,000 here, we have 2,860 something there. We hit the time warp. And you want to be careful not to overshoot target because um, you don't want to have to wait another round pretty much. You want to get this all done as fast as possible. Should only take about half hour real time. All right, so we wait till we're just about at the apoapsis, you know, a few minutes away. And then we go ahead and we detach whichever satellite we want first and it's going to point to where it wants to point. Let's go ahead and release this one, because it is on our side now. But we'll wait till this stops moving so it doesn't do anything weird when we let go. Okay, that is going, and we go ahead and we uh, switch to it with square brackets. We need to activate this engine and give a little push away from this craft real quick. Now we can activate our dishes. This is a very important step for remote tech. We will unfurl solar panels so that we have plenty of power. Alright. Then we will use flight computer to point to us prograde. Alright. And we'll go to map view. And we are now prograde, so we want to go ahead and just burn as fast as we possibly can. And you see we burn very little fuel. Look at this. 1.44 a second and it is not going to take oh. Okay. We have issue. We have issue with weight, probably. I probably did not get these satellites 100% um, perfect, which is fine. We just cannot use full throttle, that is all that that means. So we go on, we push a little bit, little bit, until we start to see ourselves lose it. Okay, so we can go like at about that speed, and that is all we really need. Oh, maybe we cannot go quite to that speed. Okay, we've already pushed our apoapsis up too high. But that is no big deal. Close is good enough. So let's get a little bit closer. To about a minute. Go ahead and we will use low thrust. And we will watch our apoapsis, or our periapsis, I apologize, grow. And I know what you were thinking, Coven. You have this, you know, somewhat powerful engine. And you can only burn a little bit because of your stupid uh, weight off balance. And yes, it is stupid. I'm not going to lie to you. Alright. But, uh,. That is how we design the rocket, because we do quick and dirty. If we design satellites separate, maybe we could check the center of mass and gravity and all that, and we could have done better. But uh, we're not looking to spend all day putting up satellite network, okay? That was the point. This is quick, easy method. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to use physical time warp. 
to make this a little bit better. I'm going to watch this side, make sure it does not grow too fast. As you see, still plenty of fuel. We could do this all day if we wanted to. Remembering now that as you get closer to your target, as you get higher up, you accelerate faster. So we're going to go ahead and drop down to physical time warp of 1. And you see the apoapsis here is not perfect. Usually I like to make perfect. But that is not going to happen today. So we're just going to go ahead and deal with it, alright? Because we do not need perfect satellite network. If we want perfect satellite network, we can go back and do it later on. So we get 1 and 2, 8, 6, 8, and now we can, if we want... We can time accelerate until we are at that point, and at that point we're going to want to burn retrograde. And we'll pull that end down a little bit. So we wait until we are like right on top of it. Alright, we'll let this thing line up to prograde. Retrograde, I apologize, sometimes I get those terminologies confused. We only need to burn a little bit, so let's literally wait till we're right on top of it, so we don't mess with our periaps. And you'll notice that happens too when you come out of time warp, especially when you are very near circular orbit. All of a sudden your periaps just moves up, that is no big deal, do not worry. Just burn a little bit to bring that down. And you know you have it when it all flip over really fast. So 2867, 2868, that is nearly perfect. That is good enough for me. You might want it better for you, and I encourage you to make perfect. Because nothing is like that feeling that you cannot feel by watching me make perfect. Alright. So we're going to lane this. This is our first satellite, and we will call it um, Uncle Ben 1. Like the rice we were talking about earlier, you remember? Alright. Look at that beautiful space. Look at that. That is very beautiful space. Oh, and it is gone. Alright, so, that is our first satellite. So now what we do is we go back to uh, Space Center. We go to Tracker. We go back to our Settle Launcher. And we are wait uh, in Time Warp to come around to top of orbit again. Careful again, not to time accelerate too much. To miss our window. Alright. We'll go ahead and we pick another satellite we want. We want this one. We switch over to it. We activate the engine. Give it a little bit of push so it doesn't bump into the other thing while it's turning around. Point it at its prograde. So we extend our solar panels to ensure that we have power. Activate our dishes to ensure that they can talk to Kerbin or wherever. Alright. Now we give it a little quick burn. So time warp will be turned on. To watch to make sure that the Rappo apps does not rise too much. Alright, then we'll go ahead and we'll time accelerate so we get a little bit closer to it, so we don't have to worry about pushing it up too high. Closer you are to Apple apps, the less it will move when you do any kind of burn. Remember this, alright, this is a very important tip. should fill out until it fills just about where the other one was. Then we will start watching it a little bit better. Alright, 2,000,000. Very exciting moment. This one we might get first uh, perfect on first try, right? I 
I mean, for example, Flippy Pop, you got 2,868,168, 2,868,037. So that is almost perfect circle. That is a very good job. Now, I will say also that it, it is not necessarily important um, that uh, you be in geosynchronous orbit, okay? As long as they're all in the same orbit, they will all rotate at the same speed, and you'll be okay. But this is just fun to do, so. We go back and we are now one third of the way through our satellite network that you said you didn't think we could do because of my rockets kept blowing up and you were making a rise for some reason. Alright, let's go back for satellite number three. We'll pick any one we want. Oh no, we won't pick one yet. We got to go all the way around the world. As fast as possible on the way back because we do not need, need to worry about missing anything. As you see, we already have two satellites that are in a very good position. So now as we launch more satellite, we'll see when we come around, they're pretty close to that one, so maybe we'll do another lap. Alright, space ourselves out a little bit better. And this will become process. You will find yourself skipping more laps the more satellites you have, because you want to... They do not need to be perfect position, but they do need to be in a position where, you know, they're not jammed up on each other. Look at this again, everything we think, nah, we're too close again. Let's go ahead and go all the way around again, and this next one should be perfect, right? Alright, I like this position much better. We're very far apart from everything. So we are 6 minutes, we are 4 minutes, we are 3 minutes, we are 2 minutes, that is good. Alright. So from there, we're going to attach another satellite. Doing the same procedure, activate engine. Point prograde, it is more time efficient to point prograde first, so you can do everything else while it is figuring out its orientation. Important to activate your satellite dish, if you... Uh, a lot of power, you cannot do this. Alright. So, in gentle burn, towards wherever it is we think we are going. Let's get rid of screen clutter. Dial up time up number four. It takes very little power and fuel to move satellite around. It is not like spacecraft. Because there's really nothing to it. Alright, I didn't get weight uh, when I was in the web, but I bet you if I did, you'd find you'd be delightfully surprised at how light your satellite is. Okay, we got a little high on this end. So we get a little closer to Apple Apps. That is what they get for not paying attention to my Apple Apps. Well, it looks like this satellite can burn a little bit better. That. It can get all the way up to one third almost. Did not even have to time warp on this one. It just all falls into place, right? This must be so exciting to watch, because it is very exciting for me, I think. Alright, wait for the flip, and then we are good to go. We want to name this one, did we already? Is this the third one? Alright, this is the third one, we are halfway through Satellite Network, as soon as we name this. Go pin 3, go back to Space Center, Tracking Station. Well, I think you get the gist of it now, I could probably stop, but I'm going to go ahead and we're going to complete it, just so you can see crazy satellite network done at the very end. Again, we zip zoom around the circle. Notice we are burning electricity like crazy. So one thing we are going to do, I think, is right now we are going to... ...open these up so that we can gain power for our main system, so that all these uh, satellites don't launch with dead uh, batteries. There we go, now we are gaining fuel, so we don't need to worry about how long this is taking us. I have to get around again, and this looks like a good position. We are far enough away from everything. Two, one, one minute 
that out. Alright, so we don't want to use the one we have for all that is giving us energy, so we'll decouple that one. Switch to, activate the engine, burn a little bit, point that to Prograde, activate dishes, extend panels, and then we do a nice slow gentle burn. Maybe with a little bit of physical time warp, and we're gonna watch our apoapsis, make sure it does not climb too high. This one might end up climbing too low. So we just keep burning until this one gets to a good place. This one can burn even better than the last one. So keep burning until that one gets right where we want it, give or take. We got plenty of fuel, and that is key to this, right? Alright, that might be as close as we can get, so let's go ahead and burn retrograde. Try and bring this end down, and it will not be perfect, but like I said, we do what we have to do. I'm going to give a little time warp to get right on top of Periaps. And now we are burning this, but dog is barking in background. Because he does not know we are recording video. I don't think dogs understand concept of... Um, Recording video and being quiet about it. She's a very good dog, okay? She's not meaning any harm to you, she will not bite you. Certainly not through video monitor. That is lowering, which is not cool. 2,868,000 give or take. So we're doing lots of playing with this to get it perfect. Which we said we were not going to do, but uh, this way now you see how to do it. We got plenty of time, we're waiting for that thing to go around anyway. So might as well get on this, go prograde. So we can push that one back out. And this is all the fun of rocket science, right? It is fine uh, motor corrections. Getting everything perfect. So these two are a little closer, and these two are a little closer than would be perfect. But that is just plain fine. Because we are amateur Rogesticians. Okay, that one I totally blew because I was thinking I had to go further than I did. <laughs> oh, Havin. This video is going to take forever for you because you are not paying attention to what you are doing. You are worried about dog and wondering if dog is going to bark through the entire video and ruin it and make everybody think that you are amateur Rocketologist. Okay. 866, 868, that is pretty good. So get out of here and we name this Uncle Ben number 4. Alright. A lot of you probably already left because I taught you everything pretty much you need to know, alright? So why are you still here? Do you want to hear more rice cooking tips? Is that why you are still at this video? Okay. Tell me something about rice, okay? What I will do sometimes, and I do this with macaroni as well, to make the macaroni and cheese, okay? You get chicken bouillon cube, and you put it in water when you are boiling water before you put everything in, and then you put in your rice, and then you put in your macaroni, and it gives it uh, chicken flavor, which is very nice, okay? This is nice chicken rice, nice chicken mac, I call it, instead of chili mac. Alright, you will not be disappointed by this. It is a good thing you stayed around. You would have missed that helpful tip. Again, but we are too too close to other satellites, we don't care for that. We want to go around over time, see what's happened. Go 
Alright, this is uh, looks like an okay place to put satellite, maybe. It is a little close to the other thing, but that is uh, is alright. We don't want perfection. So, we activate engine. Oh, I locked the gimbal, which is not what I want to do. Turn towards Prograd. Activate all these nonsense. Oh, I, I ejected the one that we had. Uh, we're getting power from, so let's go ahead and extend this one really quickly. Alright, this one is going to Prograd. And we are going to make the burn. Time warp on. There goes my dog again. about where we want to be. Alright, we are... Uh, we're just going to finagle this. Go ahead and get this very far up. And we burn retrograde. You'll feel this way too, I think. Uh, when you are waiting for your satellites to get where they're supposed to go, and you'll be like, oh, well, it is close enough. If it is close enough for Hoven, it is close enough for me, because... I don't know why. Maybe because I have low self-esteem? Is that why? Alright, 2,860-something... Good enough, maybe. Whatever, alright. So, Uncle Ben, number five. Alright, we got one more. Okay. This thing, this tedium is almost over. This is this is a bittersweet part of starting new game with remote tech. Because you like remote tech, alright? Maybe you even love remote tech. But then you find yourself thinking, oh man, I've got to build another satellite network now. So what I have done, and I have actually done this... Okay, my game has crashed. So we're going to end video here. But um, what I've done is I've made the save game that has satellite network already in place. Because I have built it, I think I have built it once, that is good enough. But we're going to end the video here. You saw what I was doing, we would have done it one more time. I would have sounded even more miserable because my lunch is actually waiting for me. But um, I thank you for watching, I hope you actually learned something today. Alright, bye bye.